Okay. Didn't know that. All right. Uh, Nelly and Ashanti may not make it. Uh, uh, Nelly is used to being an industry boy. And unfortunately for him, there was a rumor that r went around about him having a smaller pecker. Now, that's allegedly he was big with rap, stuff like that. You know, I don't care to how to feel about a man's size. However, uh, these women, like Kiki Palmer and stuff, all these women go out and they date these white men and men from other races and stuff like that. And they either come back halfway or they come back and get themselves an industry person. Now, again, this wouldn't be an issue if it wasn't for clear signs that they got, uh, they got pretty much dropped. Like, they, they, they like, it, it's not like it was even. You know, it hurts their pride when dating out doesn't work out because you're dealing with a different culture. And the assumption always made is that black women can make it because the black men are holding them back. Like, I'm not making that up. That's literally on a ground level what I've heard, what I've heard and what I've seen uh, when it comes to regular daily relationships. And that kind of travels. Um, it does a kind of travel. It actually travels up to... A lot of these women who be, uh, they're not third generation, uh, rich or third generation mixed. Like a lot of those women who are like, oh, I just won the lottery, something like that. I'm not getting with a black man or, oh, because I make six figures, I'm not getting with a black man because they don't listen. Well, that's not supposed to happen. And again, when these, when this doesn't work out, the black women are hush about it. Luckily, this woman was willing to not be hush about it. Uh, this Facebook, and I believe this is a page. I don't think you would post this if you didn't want people to see or know it. But uh, most of the time, they're quiet about stuff like this. And this is what I mean by they'll do homework when it's something they actually want. But yeah, you can see, read the post there. It's really, they're only reevaluating themselves because they lost white men and therefore the bag. You see, what they're trying to com compete with is the sexual market value place of black men to most other ethnicities of women. Now, when it comes to long-term relationships, uh, our value goes down the drain. But when it comes to, uh, as, as Maya would say, uh, for the what was she off of the view? Whatever talk show she was off of, she said, we're used for play. You see, because women can't differentiate sex market value from like marriage market value, they see black men on sex market value still scoring and they're like, oh man, we're going to lose. Now, I can't say that's the case for Ashanti. I don't know why you got into a relationship and kept thirst trapping. But I have an idea, and it's probably due to the fact that her self-worth is based off of uh, how good-looking she is and showing that off. You see what she's wearing right there? What she's wearing right there is like that. And you see, white men will try you. They'll, 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 they'll hit it, and, and they'll quit it. But it's the way that the black women try to soften it that makes all this weird. Because understand... They want us to cheer for when they date out and stuff like that, or they want to use it as leverage. So that's why a lot of black men don't like talking about these types of subjects. You know, they normally stick to the data, and I get it. But again, the main thing I'm focusing on is how she's addressing because she lost this white man, they need to change or they don't play with these antics. Black men wouldn't play with these antics if y'all didn't keep trying to force the black community to be a matriarchy. Matriarchies naturally fall to patriarchies, and I've been saying that. So when black women are doing this, they want black men to lose. They want the community to lose. You see, as long as it's matriarchal, aren't they still blaming black men? Now, we're going more into the Bible. Devil just means deceiver. Who's deceiving us into believing the community can function like a matriarchy when the women themselves are comparing it to a patriarchy. Who's forcing a community to function like this?
when Jesus caught one of his disciples speaking ill, he told him, get the devil off you. The devil can be on you momentarily. It does not mean you're the devil. But the way these women allow the devil in constantly, and I'm not referring to this, uh, this uh, Amorite or possibly uh, whatever Caucasian guy. I'm not, I'm not referring to him per se. I'm referring to the fact of how they allow certain how they allow like sex to take over all this other stuff and it's like if they know this devalues themselves if they know they can't cheat the system why keep trying each and every generation and they keep doing it they keep doing it and it's that's why these evaluations eventually fail because they're just comparing themselves to black men and how they're doing and they compare themselves because they're competing with black men and they compete with black men because they want to ensure that the community remains matriarchal. When it's not. The way it's made matriarchal is by trauma and force. And the thing is, a lot of patriarchies don't play this. And the, uh, the one of the things is, when a lot of these relationships where black women are dating out don't work, number one, they're quiet about it and they try to spare feelings. They try to make it not look bad. But, you know, I, I remember the women who keep hanging out with these white people, stuff like that, didn't get killed. And the thing is, like, they think that they're the exception when they're not. But they're willing to adapt and change. Why? For the bag. Th this is why I got Bible verses below talking about the women and stuff as well. Because at the end of the day, while us black men have to stay correct, have to be correct, it's the fact that... They're willing to adapt. You see, there are arguments being made and stuff like that. And some black men just say, D oh, I'll just don't pay attention. Well, that's not always the case for black men. Because sometimes a black woman will come as your enemy and try to poison you. You, you not paying attention means that you may not notice she's on that, that agenda. She's on that let's kill black men agenda. Because they're used to uh, certain things happening around them a lot of black men are but they're not it's in the way that it's desensitized like i agree with what the media man said where we shouldn't be trying to fight and argue for what they own but i'm paying attention to the fact that they are willing to adapt to the game as long as the person is white meaning that they could adapt to build the black community as a patriarchy but they refuse to You see, some men need answers and some men don't want to become desensitized because you're going to need your senses when you do some shit. You're going to need to be able to tell something. If that were the case, we wouldn't evolve to have nerves. Now, if you beat down your nerves, stuff like that, cool. But there's some things you do need to feel. Being stoic all the way to the point where you can't differentiate certain things affects your ability to communicate with other people even. Timing with certain social, with certain social, uh, I almost said social events. I don't know why, but it's just like you need to know certain things, and some of these things are things you got to feel out. You got to be able to feel out when someone's not right for you because that sign that someone's not right for you, whether it be a, a partner or a friend or someone you work with, might come from feeling something. But again, their ability to and and willing willingness to adapt to white men, number one, shows who their real masters are. Number two, shows why they argue the black community should be heterogeneous. Look, they act like they're trying to make the white community heterogeneous. They're not. Whenever it's like that, it's just so that they can widen up or do some stuff like that. Because a lot of these communities that uh, you go back in the books. Like some Mexicans and Hispanic, you go back in the books and some of them were darker and then they came out lighter. I'm not even talking about all the way back, way back when. I'm talking about like just three generations. Because I was surprised. Like when I met a dude and he was he was full, full blood Mexican and he was as dark as an African. That dude, I, I should have got a genealogy test from him. But he was full on. Like he was like he was able to prove pictures that he was from Mexico and stuff like that. And I'm not talking about escape down to slavery because of slavery stuff. No. 
but they re they re they're willing to sit down, have the conversations, and realize that this stuff doesn't work and change for the white men. Even though they don't act like it, they want the bag more than they want uh, black men to succeed. And this is why I'm I'm pro passport and S Y S B M because at the end of the day, for real, for real. I don't hate black women. This is not about hating black women. It's about recognizing and realizing that this problem is not going to change. And it's never going to.